leading the nation in school communications, award-winning D93 News starts now. Hello and welcome to D93 News presented by Farm Bureau Bonneville County. Election Day is coming up on May 16th. The district is running an elementary school bond to help facilitate all the growth we've seen and are expecting here in D93. Now early voting is going on right now so you can vote in person at the county elections office up until 5 p.m. on Friday the 12th. The county elections office is located near the corner of B Street and Capitol Avenue in historic downtown Idaho Falls. And of course, you can also vote on the day of the election. You can even register to vote at your polling place on election day. If you have any questions, please call the county elections office and they will be happy to help you out. Now, our D93 facilities are used for a variety of community events. And this past weekend, they were used for one of my favorite events. I love this story. Uh, Cole Sams, he really captured the heart of the Special Olympics, and we couldn't be prouder to help with this great event. This weekend at Bonneville High School, the stage was set for some very special athletes, with Special Olympics Idaho hosting their Eastern Regional Competition. And just being out and about on the track and in the gymnasium, you won't see more dedication and determination than you get from these superstars. Go, go! Whether it be on a bike on the track or on the basketball court, these athletes from all across Idaho were eager to show off their skills. The athletes came out and they were so excited they were here about an hour early, which is pretty typical for them. Um, and they were champions all the way through the random rainstorms and the wind. On the hardwood. We got an exciting matchup between the Gate City Typhoons and the Twin Falls Taters, who kept making bucket after bucket after bucket. And these ballers didn't lack any confidence. I love playing basketball because um, I'm a really good basketball player and I'm a king of basketball. I'm really excited because we get to play this team. And we played them like the year before, I can't remember, but we're just, I'm just excited to be here and win this game and win the next game. And yeah, our, t our Twin Falls are the Twin Falls Taters are doing good. Go Taters! Back on the track, Trinity Johnson gave everything she had in the 800 meter, and she wasn't going to let the distance stop her from crossing the finish line. Was it exciting? Yes. Is it fun? Yes. Do you love doing this? Yes. These athletes were excited, not only for the shot at first place, but also for the chance to compete with their friends and in front of their families. Yeah, hey, it's special to get to that allows us to be with other people and be able to do things we normally wouldn't be able to. It's for the people that can disabled can get and compete like other, other, like other people. And what stood out most were the 25 meter races, showing that no matter the distance, physical limitations didn't get in the way for these athletes to have their magic moment. It's so inspiring. These guys put so much work every single week just to do the things that we take for granted, you know, like being able to walk 25 meters. And so to see them do that kind of makes you take stock of your life and makes you feel like you should be doing more and that you can do more. And if you would like to do more, Heather Hitchcock wants the community to know that volunteers are always welcome to help out. We're excited to put Special Olympics in the forefront of the community. Um, everybody knows that it exists, but we want them to know that it's existing in their community and that they can get involved. And for these athletes, their journey isn't over yet. They will be competing against all the other teams in Idaho in the state summer games in Nampa next month. I love, I love the confidence from those basketball players. I love just the smiles. Great events. King of basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool stuff there from Cole Sams. Well, this week's Ermac Health Minute talks about what to expect with a pediatric feeding evaluation. Now, there are a variety of reasons why you might want to take your child in, and Alex tells us what to expect from a pediatric feeding evaluation. Hi, my name is Alex Buchanan. I'm a speech therapist and a feeding therapist at Ermac Pediatric Therapies. I would like to talk to you today about what to expect if you're bringing your child in for a pediatric feeding evaluation. 
the evaluation is going to happen basically in three parts. The first part is we're going to have you come in and we're going to get a thorough history. Usually feeding problems happen over months or years. And so we're going to ask you a million questions about what's gone right with your child's feeding and what's been more problematic. The next thing we're going to do is watch your child eat. We're going to have you bring in utensils and foods that your child likes to eat at home so we can get a good idea of what feeding looks like for your child. The third and final part of our evaluation is we're going to make a plan with you. So you're going to leave that session knowing what therapy you can do to help and strategies you can use to make feeding easier at home. If you have concerns about your child's feeding, please talk to your pediatrician and come see us at Ermac Pediatric Therapies. Uh, that's great information right mm -hmm. there. And next week, we'll be talking about some of the pediatric specialties offered at our very own ERMAC. Yeah. Well, last week, we talked about a historic first for Bonneville Online High School. This week, we have another historic first. This time from Praxium, the Yetis were well represented at this year's National History Day State Competition in Caldwell. Seventeen D93 students woke up bright and early Saturday morning to compete at state in Caldwell. It's part of the National History Day competition. For us, our kids started working on these right before, well, right at the beginning of second trimester, so uh, end of, of November, first part of December, and they worked clear through February um, on this project, and so it's pretty research intensive, um, but teaches them a lot of great skills, so they had to pick a topic that went with the theme this year, which was Frontiers in History, and the National History Day theme changes every year. The students could decide to do their own project or enter into a team division. This was the third round of competition for these students, and so at this point, they are pretty much experts on their topics. 15 of the 17 students who qualified for state from D93 came from Praxium, a school that was competing for their first time. Um, we have kind of a, a different dynamic where we have a, a group of kids here that are pretty competitive um, in whatever they do. We have a lot of kids that are musicians and they're competitive in that field. We have a lot of kids that play sports and they're competitive in that field. But uh, most all of our kids at Apraxium are also super competitive when it comes to academics. And so um, they drive each other and push each other. Um, to be the best versions of themselves and um, it's also really cool to see them cheering each other on and asking other kids like well what did you do your your project on tell me about it that's really cool you know those those types of things and so um, yes they're competing against each other but they're also cheering each other on which is really awesome. When the dust settled on a busy day in Caldwell three D93 students learned they had punched their ticket to nationals this summer near our nation's capital. Just cool stuff. I, I, I love uh, seeing these historic firsts, like you said. <laughs> and um, But uh, election day is so important. And we just want you to vote. Just go vote. Yeah, we, we need the numbers up uh, because it, this is your decision. The board makes these decisions. Uh, There's a citizen advisory committee that made a recommendation. They listened to them. They've listened to administrators. And they said, let's put this out to the public. And now it's a chance for the public to to decide if that's the direction we're going to go. And again, election day is Tuesday. We're going to have a special D93 Live Monday night to talk about all of this. Uh, we'll see how the weather is. I know for sure I'll be out there <laughs> showing the uh, the site of uh, the proposal for this uh, plan, but it, it would fix roofs. It would uh, provide some much needed relief in the elementaries, but that's up to the public to decide. But for now, that's going to do it for us. We'll see you next time on D93 News.